Hello, good afternoon, back again with another video, this time talking about budget bases. What's the best budget base you can buy? I don't know, but I own a couple of them that are both really, really good, so I wanted to talk about them and show you which ones I've got. I've covered them both in other videos. One of them's my Toman PB50 Harley Benton Precision Base. The other one is my J&D, or Jack and Danny, if you're watching in Europe, um, vintage base from DV247. Two of the best budget bases you can buy. In my opinion, the two probably best budget brands you can buy. Both of these bases come in at around the £100 mark. Um, so I'm going to just do a really quick comparison between the two and try to come to some sort of conclusion as to which one is the best. I'm not going to get into details of each instrument too specifically because there's videos that I've made which um, cover that already, which I'll put links underneath here in the description so you can check back at that if you want to. Not going to get too much into the sound of the basses here either because one of them is a precision and one of them is a jazz and the sounds are very different so you can't really compare like for like. They both have their their own sound, their own individual voice, which is very um, specific to the type of instrument they are. And it's probably not really fair to um, compare the sounds really, because they're not like for like. So first one I'm gonna show you is my latest addition to my um, arsenal. It's my Harley Benton PB50 Precision Bass, which I got from the German online retailer, Toman. This base costs just under £100, um, around €100 Euros if you're buying it in Europe. It's a really cool base. This is it. Now, a bit of a caveat with this one, I have done some modifications to it. So this isn't exactly like the one that you would buy if you were to buy one. Um, the modifications that I've done, however, don't affect the sound. So I haven't changed pickups or anything like that. I haven't than anything that affects the way it plays. Um, the modifications that I've made are purely cosmetic, i.e. I've painted the um, scratch plate white from the original black and I've reshaped the headstock into a more traditional sort of 50s, early 50s shape, which is what this base is based on. Um, and I've tinted the neck and the headstock as well in a um, amber tint nitrocellulose. So that's pretty much all I've done to it, when you buy the base, it'll have a different colour neck. In fact, it'll have that colour neck, because I didn't do the back, because it felt nice and playable on the back anyway. Um, but yeah, I've just painted it basically, painted the headstock. Everything else about it is as is. The other base I'm going to show you is my J&D um, Jazz Bass, which is this one here. Which um, came from, well they're branded J&D, I think in Europe, as I said earlier, they're branded Jack and Danny. I did think that these both came out the same factory because the headstock shapes are very, very similar, or obviously before I modified it, almost identical. I'm not sure they do now. They may have done at one point, but I believe these have changed factory recently because there's a bit of a difference. So um, this is this base is, as I say, this is the J&D Jazz Base, Jack and Danny if you buy it in Europe. I got this from the UK on online retailer DV247 and this costs just a shade over £100, so slightly more than the other one. Um, and it's a, sort of a, a reproduction of a mid-70s, 1975 I think, sort of Jazz Base. So, overall build quality, the Jazz Base just edges it I think. Everything about this bass is really really solid. It feels like a solid bass. It feels at least as good as some of the higher spec Squire, Fender Squire jazz basses that I've played. It feels better to me than the Affinity um, range of Squire jazz basses which in their own right are really good instruments. This feels to me in terms of build quality and just like the finish and everything else, this is comparable with the classic vibe and the modern player Squires. Um, so it's, a, it's a, a really, really good instrument and I, I really love this bass and I play this live a lot. I gig this in addition to my Mexican Fender Jazz, I gig this bass quite a lot, So, which is you know something that I'm really proud of. That I can do a gig with a really cheap bass, I think it's pretty cool. So that's the build quality. The build quality of the, um, the Harley Benton is pretty good as well. This bass is much heavier than the Jazz, I have to say. It's noticeably heavier 
Um, and I think maybe over the course of a two or two and a half hour gig, which I do regularly, this might become a bit of a problem on the shoulder. I haven't gigged this yet. I plan to, but I haven't yet. The jazz is pretty weighty, but it's average sort of jazz weight. It's about nine pounds, nine and a half pounds. This thing comes in at more. Um, but we'll see if ever I gig it, I'll be able to say with a bit more authority how my poor old shoulder copes with it. Um, but yeah, build quality on this is good. The neck, I have to say, the neck is fantastic on this. The fret ends are finished beautifully. Um, very, very smooth, very flat. Didn't really need any work on that at all. Um, whereas the neck on the Jazz is not so good, but I'll come to that in a little while. Um, so yeah, it's all screwed together pretty nicely. Where this bass loses out is that if you've seen the other video, for this when I first received this base I took the scratch plate off to paint it and there's a big hole in the body which seems to be part of the course because other bases have had the same problem that I've heard about um, and also the grain on here you can see it's got a nice grain the grains a photo of a grain which is stuck to the wood underneath the lacquer the piece of paper that the grain is printed onto ends abruptly about here it's covered by a scratch plate so you can't see it but you take the scratch plate off and you can see the edge of the paper which is disappointing because I initially wanted to have this without the scratch plate on couldn't do that um, so I painted it white and I think it looks better actually as it is so um, yeah so build quality overall build quality I'd say they're pretty equal um, in terms of the fit and the finish I'll do this sort of forwards backwards backwards forwards the fit and the finish well the fit of this is poor as I mentioned the whole um, on the body but the fit everywhere else is good the neck sorry the nut was cut nicely the frets are smooth the setup out of the box was good um, I lowered the, the saddles ever so slightly but I didn't have to do any trustful adjustments so you could essentially gig this I guess out, out of the box pretty much um, the fit and finish on the Jazz again very very good as good as the Harley Benton. Where this falls down majorly is the um, the fret ends are really sharp. They're okay down towards the headstock, but once you get sort of approaching the 12th fret here, they do get really, really sharp. And I have filed these down, and that's probably the only thing I've had to do on this base. Um, I got this base initially with the intention of learning how to do trustful adjustments, which I'd never done before, and how to, um, you know, to sort of swap out parts. But I cover that in the other video anyway, so just check that out. But yeah, the frets were not good, and they needed sorting. That's it, the only thing that I had to do. Um, in terms of the hardware quality, the bridge on this is a traditional Fender type bridge, perfectly serviceable. Oh, just to say, this turned up set up well as well. Um, I did a little bit. I had had to just adjust the truss rod a little bit and lower the saddles to get it to a good playing action so on the setup out of the box the Harley Benton probably just edges it over this one um, but yeah just going back to hardware the bridge is a traditional Fender Star bridge whereas the Harley Benton has got a sort of high mass more modern looking bridge which looks pretty sturdy um, the tuners not much to pick between the tuners really they're both you know pretty stable pretty good um, they're not shallows obviously or whatever they are but they're obviously that's what they're modeled on but they're both stable they both hold tuning really well which is good um, the nut on the jazz again was cut well um, the pickup on the Harley Benton is a Roswell pickup and it's really, really good. It's got great bass response, lovely, rich, deep sounding. It really does that early 50s precision bass sound well, which is what they were trying to do when they launched this bass as a, a more easy to amplify alternative for upright bass players. They were trying to replicate a kind of an upright bass sound. This does that brilliantly. It's a Roswell pickup, like I say. The older ones of these have got Wilkinson pickups, which I haven't got any first-hand experience of, but I think they're pretty good as well. So yeah, pickup is good, um, bridge is good, tuners are good, pots on this are rubbish. In fact, they're junk and they're coming out. The tone control doesn't work. The volume control 
um, doesn't work properly it just holds the same volume no matter how much you turn the knob and then it just suddenly falls off a cliff at the end there's no natural degradation of the volume and I can't gig with a bass that does that so these are coming out what's a little bit disappointed with this bass is that they if I can find the hang tag which I've got on my desk somewhere it says about quality control it says this instrument has been selected by our service team not selected sorry checked by our service team uh, well they clearly didn't check these because they're crap um, and that's a big black mark because um, you know I don't want to buy a base and find that I have to send it back or I f or find that I have to start replacing fundamental parts of it in order to use it I'd already started customizing the headstock on this which is why I couldn't send it back what I should probably have done is sent it back and you know got a replacement but um, that's where it, that's where this bass scores really badly um, they both sound brilliant I have to say when it works but this one the pickups again I don't know what the pickups are but they sound good they sound very jazz like it's perfectly usable like I say I gig this bass quite a lot I haven't changed the pickups yet I may do at some point the pots or the knobs themselves feel a bit cheap the potentiometers inside they work okay I've got no need to want to replace them really the pickups I may well replace at some point because you know they sound good the front pickup sounds pretty good both pickups together sound pretty good they sound very fender jazzy which is good the rear pickups a bit weak I find it's a bit you know, it doesn't quite have that honky middly thing which the back pickup of a jazz should have. It does it okay, but it's just not quite there. But it's not a complaint because it's a cheap bass, you know, hundred pound bass. So, you know, I think it, I think in essence, really, they're both really good basses. And I, you know, for hundred pounds, it's amazing what you can get today. I started playing bass in the very early nineties. And if I could have got a base as good as this for £100 back then, or for whatever the inflation adjusted cost would have been back then, um, I would have been absolutely thrilled. The first base I ever bought was a Fender Squire um, Silver Series Precision in 1991. It cost me £180 with a hard case, uh, brand new. I don't know what that would be in today's money, but um, certainly £100... Um, back in the early 90s would have got you a piece of junk out of your mum's catalogue you know like something with a Hondo or a K logo on it that came out of some um, unknown Far Eastern factory with an action like God knows what and strings like cheese wire and all the rest of it so you know I think bass players today people that are starting to play bass now and people that want you know a viable second Bass as a backup or whatever I think really sport for choice these days this is an excellent bass despite the shortcomings that I've described this is a really really good bass this is a fantastic bass for the price so it's hard to say which one I like the best which one's the best buy I would say this one edges it for me the J&D jazz bass from DB247 this bass edges it um, where this bass really let me down in terms of the scoring is the okay I could go on about the hole in the body if I hadn't take this, took if I hadn't have taken the scratch plate off I wouldn't have known I've never taken the scratch plate off this for all I know this could have a great hole in it as well I don't know but where this falls down was the pots and it's disappointing that this wasn't picked up at the quality check which Toman claimed to do um, this they don't claim to do quality checks on these things at DB247 Maybe they do, maybe they don't. If they had it done, they might have picked up the sharp frets. But the sharp frets is something as that I could sort out really, really quickly myself. Whereas changing pots is going to involve buying new pots, new wiring harness, and either having to crack it myself or getting someone else to do it with a soldering iron. Um, so yeah, so overall, this is the winner. This is a fantastic base, and if you want to buy a brand new base and you want to spend about £100... Um, I'd order one of these. This would be my recommendation. A bit lighter on the shoulder, like I say, that thing's a bit of a boat anchor. The other thing is that came from Germany, um, which is cool. Um, 
took about a week to come, whereas these come from DB247's um, warehouse in Romford, and this came within about two or three days, and their customer service was top notch. I'm not affiliated to DB247, or Toman for that matter, I'm just being honest, I'm just telling you what I think about these two instruments. Um, they're both fine instruments, but yeah, this is the winner, best budget base.